SMB relay attack is one of the most important attacks against Active Directory. To fully comprehend how this attack works, it's essential to first understand the fundamentals of SMB protocol and the process by which a client gains access to a shared folder on another system. So let's dive into it. As illustrated here, we have two systems A and B along with the domain controller on the right side. Client A seeks access to a shared folder on system B. To initiate this process, system A requests to log in to the domain by sending its password as an NTLMV2 hash to the DC. The DC then checks its database NTTS file, which is a really important file that stores Active Directory data, including user account information and password hashes, to find the NTLMV2 hash associated with A's login credentials. This is a security check to verify if A is who it claims to be. The DC confirms the NTLMV2 hash matches and verifies the hash. Then it provides A with a session key used for encryption and a ticket granting ticket TGT, which allows A to request services within the domain without re entering the NTLMV2 hash. With the TGT, the NTLMV2 hash no longer needs to be sent to the DC for future requests. A and now wants access to a shared folder on system B. It sends its TGT to the DC as proof of authentication. The DC verifies the TGT and generates a session key specifically for communication between A and B, allowing A to access B's shared folder securely. If SMB signing is enforced on system B, this session key is used not only for encryption, but also for signing each SMB packet, ensuring the integrity of the communication. A contacts B saying then, I need access to info shared folder sending the session key issued by the DC to the system B. In response to B's challenge response process, A also sends its NTLMV2 hash to ensure its authenticity. This process helps B verify that A is who it claims to be before granting access to the shared folder. B verifies A's NTLMV2 hash, receives the session key, and grants access to the shared folder, enabling secure communication and file transfer between the two systems. Now that we have covered how the SMB protocol works, let's explore how an SMB relay attack unfolds when SMB signing is disabled. In this scenario, client A mistakenly types an extra O while searching for the shared folder info, leading to unintended consequences. So as you can see here in front of, ac in, uh, front of accessing, we have the word info with double O. So in this scenario, everything is just as before. Client A logs in to the domain by sending its NTLMB2 hash to the DC and the DC verifies the NTLMB2 hash by checking its NTDS file, then provides A with the session key and TGT. However, this time client A, while trying to access the shared folder info, mistakenly types an extra O at the end of the folder's name. The DC then informs A that such a folder does not exist on this domain. We do not have any folder called info with double O in this domain. So the DC does not generate any second session key this time for the system A. This time A must use the LMNR protocol to ask others if anyone knows the location of the shared folder. So A broadcasts and asks does anyone know where this shared folder is? And this is where this broadcast request opens the door for potential attacks. An attacker on a network claims to have access to the info folder and tricks A into sharing its NTLMV2 hash. 
pretending they can help A access the shared folder. A, unaware of the deception, sends its NTLMV2 hash to the attacker, thinking they are authenticating to a valid system. The attacker then takes the NTLMV2 hash received from A and sends it to B, claiming to be A, and asks B to dump all of its SAM hashes. B checks its SAM file, security account manager file, which stores the hash passwords of local users, and sees that the NTLMV2 hash belongs to its local administrator, A. Since A is not only a domain user, but also the local administrator of system B, B trusts the request and grants access, dumping all the hash passwords of its local users. Now, let's move on to the next scenario of the SMB relay attack where SMB signing is enforced. As before, client A logs into the domain and the DC provides a session key in TGT. A then sends a request to access the shared folder info, typing the correct name this time. The DC provides A a session key which A and B use for both encrypting and signing the SMB packets. As before, A intends to send its NTLMV2 hash and session key to B, but in this scenario, the attacker pretends to be the system B. The attacker pretends to be system B and contacts system A asking for A's NTLMV2 hash and the session key. A, convinced that the request is legitimate and coming from system B, sends its NTLMV2 hash and session key to the attacker, granting the attacker control over its credentials and encrypted session. The attacker modifies the original request instead of accessing the info shared folder as A intended, the attacker now requests B to dump the same hashes. The attacker encrypts and signs this malicious request using A's session key, making it appear legitimate to B. The attacker forwards the modified request to B, impersonating A with valid credentials. System B then decrypts the packet and calculates its signature using the session key. The packet is correctly signed and encrypted, so now B verifies the NTLMV2 hash in its SAM in Secure Account Manager file. Since A is, lo is also local admin on a system B, as a result, B complies and sends the SAM hashes to the attacker, unknowingly giving away sensitive password data. When SMB signing is disabled, the attack process becomes significantly easier for attackers. However, even with enforced SMB signing, it doesn't completely block an attacker from penetrating, from penetrating the system. Check out our practical video on SMB relay attacks in the lab to sharpen your skills in this area.